Welcome everyone. I am introducing a video here that I recorded in a classroom with a few students demonstrating scripting. So uh, we'll cut to this video here in just a few seconds, but uh, I just want to let you know that you may hear some uh, students speaking in the background or asking me questions, me responding to them. This is a classroom environment and um, it's a live recording that we did and um, it's all about scripting which is your assignment this week so uh, I believe that this will really help you out in your assignment and I wanted to share this with all of you but I also wanted to give a little bit of an introduction before you actually watch the video so you know um, the environment that it was being um, presented at so here it is uh, my video on uh, bash scripting all right, so script is basically just a list of instructions, kind of like a recipe of things. If you've done bat scripts in Windows or something like that, it's almost the same thing. So what the first thing you need to do is just open up a text editor and name your script. So I'm going to open up, I'm just going to open up Vim. Or Nano would work, right? Or Nano would work. And I'm going to name it script1sh something like that right and then what you do is is when you're doing a bash script this is kind of just good procedure you don't have to do this but the first line it should be this uh, hash sign or it's also called uh, pound and then the exclamation point and then you can do bin bash and what this does is tells it that we're going to be using the bash shell Right, um, because they're they're different shells on Linux and Unixes, and um, you may be running this in a different shell. Bash is the terminal and the command line that we use in, in class here. And um, if you do did transport this over to another computer that was running a different shell, it wouldn't run unless you put this here to be able to call what shell you're actually using. So then. From here on out, all you do is you list commands that you may already know. So for instance, we'll do an echo command, right, which we've done several times in class. So it says, um, I don't know, hello, Jared, do something like that. And then right there, that's actually a script if you wanted to save that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and close it. From here, you can see that uh, you can see my script. Right there. You see my mouse? Yeah. And so now I want to run it. And in the book, um, and also in the command line book, and the textbook, and probably online, you'll see a lot where you have to change the permissions of that script to actually run it to be executable. Um, we haven't talked a lot about how to do that in class yet. Um, but you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to make it executable or worry about that. To run it in the bash shell, you can just use sh and then the name of the script that you're using. You can just do that. And then you can just run it, and it runs your little script that we run. And all we did was say, say hello, Jared, right, in the program. And uh, so that's the very essentials and basics of a script, is opening up a text document, putting in your commands, putting them in the order you want them to go in, and then saving it, and then you can run it anytime you want. Same process if you use Nano. I mean, you don't. Same process with Nano. Just opening, closing, saving is different okay. than it is in Vim. Yeah. Now, if we open up this program again, let's let's just add some things to it because it's a pretty boring script, right? You can add any of the commands that you've been using already, right? So let's say. Um, you want to get a list of all the users who are currently on this machine, right? So you might say something like this. You know, let's change this a little bit. Um, here are the users on uh, this machine. Does anyone remember the commands that will display that? Offhand. Catalog or what? Who? What? what will display 
what users are on the machine? It's not users. Is anyone there? It's not. That's bad. It's, it's uh, you can either use who or W. Right? So we'll use W um, for that. And so I'm just going to type W there. So what this is going to do now is it's going to echo out those words. Then it's going to run the W command. Okay? So let me go ahead and save that. And now let's run it again. It does just that. So it says, here are the users. Oops, I misspelled, right? User on this machine. And really, I'm the only one. Um, so it has me having two programs open that I executed. So, okay. So let's look at your PS command. So open this, and we'll go, how about this? Um, oops. It's not my script here. Here are your current processes. We'll do that. And then I kind of want a blank line here. I'll do this. Just because I want some separation there, just for clarity. Then I'll just run PS. Yeah. Yes, minus A, something like that. Then we'll save this. Let's see what happens. Fishkin processes. And there it is. It's not all on one line. And we just run a little program. It says here are your processes. And so anytime we run it, it will show our current process. So if I run another program, let's say X eyes, which is on the, the midterm, right? Which gives us those cool little eyes. Um, oh, what happened? Oh, there we go. Let's see if it now shows that process. So now it shows that X eyes is one of the processes that are running because I have that program running. Yes, one you just did. When I was watching online, they had you put it in quotations to use a dollar sign in the beginning for when I used it on a different command. Why did they do that? That is when we get to variables. So what they did is they created the PS command as a variable, and then they're using the dollar sign to call it back. And you could do that. Good. Um, yeah, but that just works differently. Yeah, I was like. So that's the basics of creating a script. And so uh, for your homework, and what you'll have next week is you'll have to create two of these. And they'll be pretty much this basic. But and it doesn't matter which one we do it in Vim or Nano, or you're going to have to do one of these. Now that you've learned text editors, you can use whatever you want. I use Vim, and that's the way I'm going to demonstrate, demonstrate it. Do you like Vim better? I do like Vim better. Um, it's more widely used as well. So, um, and it's on every machine that you'll have to work not? No, not necessarily. So that's why I use uh, Vim. So, but that's what, but I don't care what you use from here on out. You learned different ones. That's kind of what the homework's purpose was. You pick which one you like, and then that's what you use from here on out. So Linux is kind of all about choice. So I let you choose whatever tools you want to do to create it, you know. So. That's not too bad, scripting.